Hi students and welcome to HSC Chemistry and the latest in the Acidic Environment video series. Uh, this particular one is just going to be a quick uh, brief history of acids and bases. Now we have up till now had a bit of a look at um, how our definitions of acids have changed over time but we just want to kind of formalize this a little bit. Um, so there's four main ideas that you need to look at uh, and try and memorize in terms of the different types of ideas about what was an acid and what was a base. The first one was really, um, I guess, based on uh, personal experience. So obviously um, certain acids have a sour taste. We know that that's the case and some of them were consumed and that would be the easiest way to determine that. Um, and also um, certain types of reactions that uh, were observed in relation to their reactions with metals. But the first one to sort of come up with any, any sort of definition around the nature of acidic substances was Antoine Lavoisier. And his concept was that acids are substances which contain oxygen. Now, um, we kind of have a little bit of a sense of this when we looked at some of the acidic oxides. So uh, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen these do actually form acidic substances. So therefore it could be regarded as uh, substances like uh, sulfuric acid, which contains oxygen, uh, nitric acid, which contains oxygen, and carbonic acid, all of these contain oxygen. Uh, they're all acidic oxides, and therefore, or, or the acids formed from acidic oxides, and therefore this was um, a reasonable shot at a definition of acids. What we will also do, though, is quickly look at some of the limitations of each of these ideas. And the main limitation, obviously, was that, uh, first of all, certain types of acids didn't contain oxygen, and hydrochloric acid is one of the most obvious ones of those. But also, some bases contain oxygen. So we know that whilst the non-metallic oxides are acidic, metallic oxides are actually basic. And so things like calcium hydroxide, or sodium hydroxide, these also contain oxygen, but they are basic substances. The next idea that we need to have a look at is Humphrey Davy. The important thing about Davy is Davy is about displacement. And again, this is a this is a reaction that you've seen before, where um, certain types of metals can cause the displacement of hydrogen from um, an acidic substance. So that's the way that Davy defined them. Acids are substances which contain replaceable hydrogen. Um, specifically, they are displaced from the solution. And once we add a metal to an acid, the hydrogen does come out as hydrogen gas, and it causes the formation of a salt, the metallic um, anion of the acid. We also know from Humphrey Davy's uh, work that bases reacted with acids to form a salt and water. So we have the beginnings of an understanding of neutralization reactions. And whilst this definition is better than Lavoisier's because it does deal with the fact that we now look at hydrogen gas being produced, we still have some limitations. Some acid base reactions don't produce salt and water. And there's also no distinction in the uh, Davy definition of the difference between weak and strong acids. So that brought us to the ideas of Svante Arrhenius. And Arrhenius is basically what we might call um, junior high acids and bases. So up until um, you get really to the end of year 10, it's the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases that we use. Acids are substances which ionize in solution to produce hydrogen ions. So this is um, a nice, easy definition. And the degree of ionization corresponds to the relative strength of the acids. So we've now got a um, definition for acid strength. And we have um, hydrogen ions being produced by acids in solution. And we also have hydroxide ions that are being produced by bases in um, solution. So this is pretty much what you uh, encounter through your junior high school years. So it's a good definition and it's, and it's pretty much sufficient uh, for most students. 
problems with this is, um, first of all, we've looked at the, the fact that metallic oxides are, are basic. The nature of the solvent actually matters. So whilst all of these substances being dissolved in water produce the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions, if they're uh, dissolved in another solvent, they don't necessarily behave in the same way. And also what happens with a reaction between um, HCl and NH3. Now it's probably useful for you to start to build a little table of uh, comparisons between Lavoisier and Davy and Arrhenius so that we have a definition of acids and a definition of bases and also just a, a little idea about whether or not there's any um, limitations within these. In the next video, we're going to have a little bit of a look at the fourth definition, which is the Bronsted-Lowry one, and then we'll just extend this table just slightly. Thanks for watching.